下午好，九月二十八号下午的五点二十一分，欢迎您准时回到我们正在直播的《活在五点》。到了今天的嘉宾访问环节，今天我们同样为大家请到了一位省选的候选人，他就是自由党的 Down Valley West 选区的候选人，同时呢，他也是我们的这个前交通部长 Kathleen Wayne。Welcome to the show, Kathleen. Thank you very much, Cindy. It's a pleasure to be here. So first of all,、um, you used to be a minister of transportation. Tell us how was the traffic coming down here? <laughs> <laughs> the traffic was not very good, and、uh, and it's one of the things that I know really concerns people living in Toronto and the GTA. Yes.、Uh, in fact, it's one of the issues that comes up all the time. And as the as as I've been Minister of Transportation, I'm very aware that we need to do something about this, and we are in the process of、uh, of building new transit in Toronto.、Mm -hmm. And there's some very exciting projects going on.、Um, for example, we are building a new Uh, air rail link from Pearson Airport to Union Station, so、okay. people will be able to take a train that will take 20 or 25 minutes to get from Pearson to Union, and that will be done by 2015 in time for the Pan American Games.、Yep. Um, we're also expanding the Spadina York Subway State Subway up into、uh, York Region,、mm -hmm. up into York University and Vaughan, and that will again that will take thousands of cars off the road because people will be able to travel by.、Uh, Uh, by subway, and it will also mean it will be a faster trip for all of those students who go up into、uh, to York Region. But I guess the biggest project that we're doing that is going to affect people in the middle of the city is the Eglinton、uh, Scarborough Crosstown、mm -hmm. uh, LRT, and that's a that's a 26 kilometer.、Um, Uh, train that will go under Eglinton Avenue from the Black Creek Jane area right over to Kennedy, and then it'll come above ground and go up to Scarborough Town Center. It's a huge project. It's an 8.2 billion dollar project. The province is funding that, and the work is starting. It's very exciting. Besides those、um, public transportation、um, project, are we thinking about、uh, like a? Those highways, is, especially during the rush hours, like 404, 401, west and east. Well, we we continue to expand the 404,、okay. and we are doing work on the 401. There have been、uh, there have been lane additions on the 401. But you know, at the end of the day, we have to have a culture shift. We have to have people thinking about getting out of their cars and getting onto public transit.、Mm -hmm. Because what the research shows is, you can just keep building roads, and there will be more and more cars. But what really changes the、uh, equation is getting people out of their cars and getting them to take public transit. The other thing that's important. Important that we're doing is we're investing in Go Transit, and so we've already put 4.7 billion dollars into Go Transit since we've been in office. That means more trains, more service.、Um, we're going to expand Go Transit to full day. Two-way. Right now, it's mostly a commuter service on most of the lines,、yeah. and so what we want to do is have those trains running all day, two ways, and、um, allow people to travel out of rush hour time. Because it's not just people who are coming to the city or going to Barry or going to Richmond Hill, wherever they're going、um, to work. They're also going to visit family. They're going to、uh, go to a show, and so we want to make sure that they have a chance to do that. Go to a sporting event. Mm -hmm. On the weekends and during the weekdays, so that I think will change again. It'll change the culture of getting in your car and、uh, and driving. And in this way, you get on the train. If you are going to work, what I know is that people take their work with them. They use that time to、uh, to work on the train. Okay, and、um, Farsino, before you became the Minister of Transportation, you were the Minister of Education, and you have a lot of experience in the education field. I do. Yeah. I so do. tell us, what did your party and what did you do for the past several years as a Minister of Education, and、yeah. what are you planning to do for? 
Okay. So education, like transportation, um, is an area that is extremely important to everyone. I used to think when I was a Minister of Education that everyone knew it touched all of their lives. Sometimes mm -hmm. I had to explain though, even if you don't have kids in school, it's important to have education system, but um, in transportation everybody knows it touches their lives. So they're both issues that touch everyone. And Absolutely. so we've been investing in the future, you know. We've mm -hmm. been investing in full day kindergarten for four and five year olds. There are schools around the province, nearly a thousand schools around the province that already have full day kindergarten mm -hmm. and we're going to continue to roll that out to all of the elementary schools in the province. Um, we couldn't do it all at once because some schools are full and they don't have the room so we mm -hmm. had to provide um, dollars, money for uh, for uh, building of, uh, of those schools. We've improved, improved the test scores of our students. There are more students graduating from high school. When we came into office, 68% of kids were graduating from high school. Now 81% are graduating. That means more students have the opportunity to go on to post-secondary, go to college, go to university. We're also making investments in post-secondary education. We've got 200,000 more students going to post-secondary education education and that means they're going to have better jobs in their lives and be more successful and we know that there are some students who are struggling with debt struggling with tuition costs yeah. so we're going to reduce tuition costs by 30 percent for um, middle yeah. income and lower class lower income students okay um, so we're, we're talking we're, we're talking about uh, the transit and uh, the education and uh, we we had two liberal candidates coming to the show for the past two days and they didn't get the chance to talk about the next question so but I'm gonna ask you did you watch the debate last night I did how I was did. it how... you know I thought it was I thought it was great now I might have a little bias <laughs> but but I really thought and I I was knocking on doors today and I heard young people say this to me that Dalton McGinty made the best case for the future you know he laid out a vision my uh, my impression my opinion of the debate was that the other two leaders the NDP leader and the conservative leader were simply criticizing they were just talking about our policies and criticizing our policies but they didn't say what they were going to do for post-secondary education they didn't say what they were going to do for little kids they didn't say what they were going to do for seniors they didn't say what they were going to do to invest in transit so that that vision that we have of what the future can look like in Ontario is the one that the Liberals are putting forward and we're not hearing that from the Conservatives and from the NDP. So that's why I think the uh, the Premier, Dalton McGuinty, did a very good job last night talking about the jobs that we've brought to the province, the fact that Ontario is recovering from the economic downturn better than any other jurisdiction in the country. Mm -hmm. And you can't, you know, that's a fact. The fact is since January we've recovered more jobs and the rest of the country put together. So people need to hear that, and I think they did hear it last night in the debate. Yeah, and uh, Mr. Tim Hudak pointed Dr. McGinty, the Premier, as uh, the tax man. Yeah. How, how, how do you see that? Well, so, you know, we've been very clear. We made some difficult decisions. We made some difficult decisions that were in the best interests of business in the province. And the fact that we restructured the tax system and we, we brought in the HST, if you look at British Columbia, British Columbia adopted the HST to be com to be competitive with Ontario yeah. now they've turned back they're right. not going to adopt the HST and so that makes Ontario more competitive for businesses there are 150 countries around the world that already have a tax like the HST a mm -hmm. combined tax that makes it easier for business so we've already saved businesses 500 million dollars it was the right thing to do and we're seeing jobs come back to the province and tell us more about the liberal platform like uh, the health care yeah, so so um, we recognize that health care is the biggest budget item in the Ontario budget and we we know that we're going to have to retool we're going to have to uh, make decisions about where those health dollars are going to go one of the very important issues is the number of seniors who are coming into the health care system and who need support so our focus in our health care platform is on two things it's on wellness keeping people well in the first place so having a, a childhood obesity strategy because there are too many kids who are overweight we need to develop a strategy to yeah. make sure kids um, eat the right things and get enough exercise we brought in new nutritional guidelines into the schools but we also need to make sure that seniors have the support they need at home sometimes I knock 
knock on a door and a senior who's living alone, it looks to me like they don't have enough support. If they don't have a daughter or a son to help them or a grandchild, they may need some, some more support, some home care to just help them stay at home. So we're going to put three million more hours uh, of home care into the system. And we're going to also work with doctors to make sure that house calls start to happen again so that doctors can go out into the community and see families, see seniors where they are. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, will really help keep seniors out of the emergency room and keep them out of hospital. We still have two minutes. Um, you mentioned about the transportation and education of in touch everyone's daily life. There's one more thing, I think, is jobs. Yes, yes, and jobs, I, I, I've touched on that a little bit when I said we re, we've, restructured the, uh, we've restructured the tax system, but we also have been reaching out to other countries. The Premier has been on a number of trade missions. He's going to double the number of trade missions that he goes on. He's been to China, he's been to India, he has been around the world talking to business business owners and mm -hmm. people who have capital that they want to invest and developing partnerships with people in other countries because we are 13 million people. We're only 13 million people. We can't be self-sufficient in this province all on our own. Yes. So we need to work with other countries. Definitely. We need green technology, new technology. That's where our new jobs are coming from. And as I said, we've recovered more jobs than the rest of Canada combined since January. Okay. Um, the last question, um, if you're re-elected, you're going to be there third term. So what yes. can you bring to the people in the Down Valley West writing? So I feel that our work is not finished. We want to get that Eglinton LRT built. Okay. We want to make sure that uh, full day kindergarten gets rolled out across the province, including in all of Don Valley West, in all of uh, Scarborough and the GTA. And we want to make sure that we continue to bring jobs to our local communities. So, you know, there are 500 jobs at uh, a manufacturing plant in, right in Don Valley West that are there because of our our green technology and our green energy mm -hmm. policy. So we want to make sure that we continue to grow the economy by bringing jobs to the province. Thanks. Thank you a lot. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you very much. Now it's 5 o'clock. We're very happy to have our former Prime Minister Wei Yen to talk to us about the election election. We'll take a break for the next break. 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 Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.